you know, thank you for this opportunity and for holding this hearing. I hope this will be the first of you know, many hearings because I think it's an important issue. Um, New Jersey, I wanted to just put it in a little perspective, was always a leader in dealing with climate change and sea level rise. And it was always bipartisan. Uh, even, you know, Governor Whitman had started doing programs to reduce greenhouse gases. You can go back to the Kane administration even earlier. Um, and uh, back then they just called it the greenhouse effect. And so there have been programs in place. And, and I wanted, you know, New Jersey was the second state in the nation, and it passed overwhelmingly bipartisan to pass a Global Warming Response Act. Uh, we, were, we, we had one of the biggest battles, and it was a bipartisan bill. Um, Majority Leader Kane was a co-prime on it. Reed Gossiora was as well in passing Clean Car. Uh, same thing when we decided to join Reggie. And the irony about the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative is that that concept of trading uh, it was not something that came out of the environmental community. Uh, we tend to believe in taxes and regulation when they're dealing with carbon. It actually came from Governor George Pataki, and the leading person who put together the concept was a guy by the name of uh, Bob Grady, and people should know who Bob Grady is. He's from Livingston. He was a speechwriter for Tom Kane. He grew up with Governor Christie, and he developed the sulfur dioxide trading program for President George Herbert Walker Bush, which was the basis of Reggie. So historically, climate and dealing with greenhouse gases has been bipartisan. Lately, it's becoming more partisan, I think, because of the influence of a small faction. But in a state like New Jersey, I think it's still bipartisan, though some people may hold back because they don't want to get attacked. Uh, in the case of, you know, Kip Bateman, when he voted for um, putting New Jersey back in a Reggie, uh, a outside group spent tens of thousands of dollars attacking him. So I understand that there's a lot of belief by a lot of members of both parties in dealing with climate, but sometimes it's a little tougher uh, for some because of those kinds of attacks. When you look at our state, and as a coastal state, you know, there's enough science out there. Just look at you know, the maps that Rutgers University has produced 10 years ago and recently showing about 9% or more of our state not only vulnerable to sea level rise and storm surge, but could potentially go underwater. Um, you know, with respects to uh, you know, uh, you know, Garrison Keeler, but you know, the Delaware Bay Shore, you know, and the whole area, you know, we might have Cape May be gone days. That Cape May is one of those places that could go underwater. Uh, we have done a lot in the past in dealing with adaptation and mitigation. New Jersey was one of the first states to put together in their coastal program uh, studies on how to deal with it along the Delaware Bay Shore and places like Tuckerton. Uh, and, and other places. We also have some of, the, some of our most important infrastructure is very vulnerable to sea level rise and storm surges, whether it's Port Newark or Newark Airport, uh, whether it's the Meadowlands, whether it's even here in Trenton that gets flooded pretty regularly. Uh, so, you know, when you look at the overall picture to the state, it's not only cost us, you know, it's, you know, billions of dollars, it's cost us lives. And I think we have to move the state forward and how we get to do it, I think, is critical because if we don't, in the future, we may not get the kind of federal aid and we may not get the type of resources we're currently getting. And, you know, our climatologist, and I know um, Chairman Shivakula mentioned it, but, you know, our climatologist said that when we had Irene and Lee, that was a millennium event. When we had Sandy and a Nor'easter, that was a millennium event. So we've had two millennium events in this decade already. And any given year, we could see, you know, massive storm surges or, you know, again, we're having a, you know, a nor'easter coming and we don't know what the outcome is going to be. So I wanted to just set that up because I think it's critical as we move forward. President Obama's um, historic um, plan for, for, for climate action is not only about reducing uh, greenhouse gases and uh, pollution, because when you reduce greenhouse gases, you reduce mercury and many other pollutants. It's also about developing a green economy. You know, the commitment of more than six uh, to power uh, six million homes by 2020, um, I think, is an important part with renewable energy as part of his plan, but also with the um, EPA coming out with greenhouse gas rules. So we see things moving in the direction towards greener power and reducing of carbon. An important part of it is the HUD Community Development Block Grant 
program and the Sandy Rebuild Task Force that I was a member of and the recommendations that have come from that. And I think it's critical for the state to start looking at that and, ad and adopting many of those recommendations. In that document, they clearly call for states to do planning for adaptation and sea level rise and, and mitigation. They clearly call for um, resiliency and renewable energy. And the concern that we have is that New Jersey is not doing it. Um, when, you know, when you call climate esoteric, uh, when you try to say you don't have time to think about sea level rise, those are all bad signals. Uh, currently, the, the HUD Community Development Block Grant Program and those recommendations in the Sandy Rebuild Task Force are not just for HUD, it's for every federal agency, Department of Energy, EPA. And one of the, our major concerns is that in that plan, it very specifically calls for the states to adopt the most current energy codes for efficiency, um, and New Jersey has not done it. Our codes are two cycles behind. They're from 2009 for residential and 2007 for commercial. We know that we create a lot of jobs by investing in energy efficiency. We also know we reduce greenhouse gases, pollutants, but more importantly, we reduce costs to ratepayers. So we had written the DCA commissioner about New Jersey being behind on their codes. And the response that we got back was that we've done enough. And I'll make sure the committee gets a copy of that letter that we, the 2009 codes are fine. Secretary Donovan very specifically said that we have to have the most up-to-date codes. He also said that when the new codes come out and the 2014 codes are actually being worked on, they were written in, in Atlantic City and they will be out by the end of this year. Uh, and if we don't adopt those codes, not only does it mean that we're rebuilding without the most avail best available building codes, but we're also rebuilding in a way that will mean at least 15% more pollution, uh, more greenhouse gases, but more importantly, we're doing it when the federal government, the people who are writing the checks say, no, we need to adopt uh, the most recent building codes. You know, in, in the response I got back from the DCA, they said, well, in our, in our plan, we don't have to do it. In their original plan for, for $1.3 billion, that is correct. They're coming in for more money and the rules have changed. And if we don't adopt our plan to meet the federal plan, uh, we, will, we can potentially lose money. But more importantly, People in New Jersey will be paying more for energy. Uh, people in New Jersey will see more pollution. Uh, it's also critical because as we speak, um, and another important part of the, the Sandy Rebuild Plan is on grid rebuilding. Very specifically, HUD recommends not only energy efficiency, but distributive generation, uh, including renewable energy, uh, microgrid technology, smart grid technology, um, and, and again, New Jersey isn't doing it. We see energy strong in front of the BPU, $4 billion, and it's not included. In fact, PSENG is cutting back on many of their clean energy programs. Uh, so we think that, you know, moving forward, New Jersey really needs to update its building codes. We need to update our grid, but we have to do it in a way that's also consistent with what the federal government is calling for. Because quite frankly, if we don't, we could, you know, not only will we waste money, but we could lose potential federal funding. Um, a couple of other points that I wanted to make because I think, quite frankly, uh, the legislature should, have, should pass finally legislation on green buildings. We've had building code legislation kicking around for years. We've also had incentive bills for green buildings. So the reason I bring that up is that's something I think this, this, this body should uh, deal with again. Um, same thing, you know, in dealing with um, renewable energy. New Jersey used to be second in solar. Uh, we're now down to fourth. And last month, we only installed 8 megawatts. One time, we had close to 10,000 jobs in New Jersey. Now we're under 5,000. Uh, so it not only impacts the environment, but it impacts our economy. You know, we've been waiting for three years for offshore wind, for the rules to come forward. And again, it's critical for jobs. It's also critical to produce clean energy uh, in a way that doesn't produce greenhouse gases. And you know, other states are going to move past us, whether it's Maryland or Massachusetts. And so I think it's, again, critical as part of it. We talked, uh, you talked a little bit about the clean energy funds. Put it in this perspective. Between the 115 million from the retail margin fund that was diverted 
and close to 900 million from the clean energy funds and close to another 100 and something million from Reggie. If we had that kind of money to do um, better grid, better rebuilding, think of all the people who are, have to go out in the more than 40,000 structures that were damaged in the state buying new appliances, if we had enough money to give them all rebates to buy the highest level of Energy Star, or to buy better windows, or, or for those people who are fixing their homes uh, to do better insulation. Uh, just think about how much money um, they could be receiving as far as rebates and others that they now have to pay out of their own pocket as they do it, or, they, or if they don't do it. I mean, that's even worse. Uh, so all that money, you know, that uh, has been diverted has consequences. Yesterday, the state announced they're giving out $25 million uh, to help municipalities, you know, do fix their grid and their electrical systems because of Sandy. It's a drop in the bucket. It's sort of like rebuilding a beach with a kid's pail uh, compared to the amount of money we need. We know that the New Jersey grid, to bring it up to code and to bring it to where we need to do to make it more resilient, is going to cost somewhere between 8 and $12 billion. Um, but meanwhile, almost a billion dollars has been diverted into the budget. And that's, you know, and again, you can't get that money back, but we have to go forward. Um, one of the things that we're suggesting, and there's legislation in the, um, in, in, in the Senate, is to actually constitutionally dedicate the clean energy funds. Um, the next, you know, point I wanted to make is talking about Reggie. Reggie had, you know, helped New Jersey reduce um, millions of tons of air pollutants and created close to 1,800 jobs here in New Jersey. Uh, at one point it was generating about 63 million for the state of New Jersey in monies for energy efficiency and other programs. Since we've pulled out, New York State has received close to $500 million. We've received zero. It's a lot of jobs. It's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, reduced pollution. And again, um, there, is, there is in the um, Senate Senator Lesniak has a bill in to constitutionally put us back into, re, into Reggie. Um, Senator Smith has a bill that, that uh, would be an SCR that would not only dedicate Reggie, but would dedicate the, um, the SBC funds so they wouldn't be rated, so that money can go out and do the work it needs to do in helping make this state more sustainable and more resilient. Uh, but the biggest issue that I think we face and that we face for this committee is how do we deal with climate change? These are small pieces, but New Jersey has to ad adapt to climate change. We have to do mitigation. We need to figure out where we should have buyouts and where we need to pull back from the most vulnerable areas, what areas of the state we should harden, what areas of the states we should elevate. Should we try to tr transfer some of that growth from the vulnerable areas to the less vulnerable areas? Uh, and I think it's an important part. And as we do it, we have to figure out how we can build smarter and better not only in elevation, but in green building and energy efficiency, things like blue roofs and green roofs that not only save on energy, but help deal with storm water and combined sewer overflow issues. Uh, we need to really look at the state in a much more holistic way. Um, you know, we talked about areas that are vulnerable. Well, the Meadowlands are vulnerable. I mean, when you deny climate change, it's how you end up having things like trains being put in the Kearney rail yard. But, you know, one day, you know, when the Giants play the Dolphins in the Meadowlands, they could be real Dolphins. I mean, you know, climate change is real and it's impacting the state. And I think uh, this legislature needs to come up with a plan and a, a series of bills and legislation to move the state forward, whether it's on clean energy, distributive generation, uh, smart grid, uh, making sure that uh, we have offshore wind projects going forward and make sure that we have, uh, you know, have... Um, uh, an energy efficiency standard as well, so that we're making the state, you know, greener and saving money and reducing pollution. Uh, I know there's a lot uh, on your plate, but it's critical because if we don't do it, we're going to lose out, not just with federal money, but environmentally and, and, uh, and with our economy. We, you know, Hurricane Sandy, you know, the fact that the trains didn't run cost the state billions of dollars in lost productivity and economy because of people not being able to get to work, businesses being shut down uh, for weeks at a time because the grid went down, cost us billions of dollars in lost revenue and taxes and, and lost economy. You know, climate change is real and it's impacting our state. And we need to move the state forward. And in the process, not only can we make the state more resilient and protect us against future storms, but more importantly, uh, we can grow our economy. 
And if we don't do it, those jobs and that economy are going to go to adjoining states that are doing a better job at it. And so, you know, the old saying is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. We need to change. Uh, we were a leader. We're not a leader now, and we need to move forward because we're going to lose out both environmentally and, and with our economy. Thank you.